വെൽക്കം ഫ്രണ്ട്സ് ഫാദർ ഓഫ് അറ്റോമിക് ബോംബ് ബയോഗ്രഫി ഓഫ് റോബർട്ട് ജൂലിയസ് ഓപ്പൺ ഹൈമർ ഇറ്റ്സ് എ ബയോഗ്രഫി ക്രിയേറ്റഡ് ഇൻ ട്വൻറ്റി ഫൈവ് ഇയേഴ്സ് ബൈ എ റിസർച്ച് ബൈ ടു ഓത്തേഴ്സ് ആൻഡ് ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് എ കൾമിനേഷൻ ഓഫ് ട്രയംഫ് ആൻഡ് ട്രാജഡി ഓഫ് വൺ ഓഫ് ദ ഗ്രേറ്റസ്റ്റ് ഓർ ദ വൺ ഓഫ് ദ മോസ്റ്റ് നോട്ടോറിയസ് nuclear nuclear physicist or theoretical physicist theoretical of our century, Robert Julius Oppenheimer. Even the the latest movie by Christopher Nolan, uh, the Hollywood director, that is based inspiration from this book. This book is released in 2005 and that is based on that. So this book tells about uh, Oppenheimer generally. We are not going to talk about the movie because I did not watch yet. i'm going to do that after this but oppenheimer more than a scientist he is a leader he is a philosopher he enjoy poetry and intellectual writings he enjoy hemingway he even is too much fond of bhagavad gita when they have a trinity trust trinity test the first nuclear test happened he told that now i became the death the destroyer of the worlds so he copied from bhagavad gita and mentioned that bhagavad gita is a hindu scripture which is talking about a, a conversation between lord krishna and the prince arjuna so the book will talk about that the book name as you know it's american prometheus prometheus is a greek god who taken the fire from the gods and given to the mankind so this is somehow a metaphor which talks about similar thing what oppenheimer has done for us so i'll go in detail to the book before i start i'll have to give you two topics mainly first of all the world war 2 specially how it is been fought what are the teams involved on it keep this in mind because this will be required that is been fought between two powers axis powers and allied powers axis powers are germany italy and japan and the other side is uh, united states for sure later side then britain uh, then we have uh, russia mainly britain russia france china and united states like five countries out of that france and china was not that much involved so that's how it's all started we'll go in detail on the particular situation but keep this in mind when you are going through the section of the book it's a very book book big book actually 800 page we're trying to summarize it in as short as possible second point i have to tell is that this book is not going to make any judgment on a personality of robert j oppenheimer Uh, we can tell he is a destroyer of the world he made the curse same time he can, we can tell he fought for the country he do his duty so there is we have no attempt to make anybody glorious or when glorious or notorious in any way so let's get started so the book has uh, 40 plus chapters so we are not going into chapter by chapter this time like we usually do instead i'll go through quickly about childhood and other parts as well <laughs> so he was born in new york in america for the first and second generation german immigrants which is a jewish family so he was born in a fluent family we'll, there are a lot of things talking about there we'll go straight to his college days he studied in harvard which was something like an intellectual bazaar for him he met lot of people including his god niels bohr so there he spent he was trying to understand which the one of the speciality i understand from oppenheimer is that he is he is having an interest on wide array of topics but he is not in depth of anything there is an interesting book by called range by mark epstein talk about similar thing how the non specialist win on this world like that so similar to that oppenheimer he was trying to look at multiple topics then he end up on chemistry and then he studied ba chemistry 
बट एट द एंड ही टोल्ड दैट ओके आई एम इंटरेस्टेड इन द फिजिक्स इन साइड द केमिस्ट्री सो ही जस्ट वॉन्ट टू गो मेजर इन टू फिजिक्स फर्दर सो आफ्टर हावर्ड विच वॉज समथिंग लाइक एन इंटलेक्चुअल एक्सपोजर टू हिम ही गो टू यू के टू द कैवेंडिश लेबोरेटरी ही गॉट अ रेफरेंस फ्रॉम हिज प्रोफेसर एक्चुअली द रेफरेंस वॉज टू रोदर फोर्ट द फेमस साइंटिस्ट हु हैव एटोमिक मॉडल एंड ऑल बट अनफॉर्चुनेटली रोदर फोर्ट रिजेक्टेड हिज रेफरेंस और रिजेक्टेड टेकिंग हिम टू द टीम बट लकली ही रेफर टू जे जे थॉम्सन अनदर साइंटिस्ट सो ही वर्क देयर he was studying actually i cannot tell work there he studied there for almost a year after that he was somehow having an internal intellectual conflict or depression or whatever it is he was not able to cope up with that scenario because somehow when we are in a in our our mindset is not aligned with something we will have a stress and strain happening similar to things was there so he left there and he went to germany in gottingen there he was having a a growth happening there that was somehow that 20th century the industrialization of steam engine and other words afterwards a new era of science was evolving even 1905 albert einstein was having a special theory of relativity and all later on they come to a problem of ultraviolet catastrophe i'm not going detail there but quantum mechanics somehow started in that period and germany especially in gottingen he has going to see lot of people because most of the people who who contributed to quantum mechanics was from germany max planck albert einstein lot of people there heisenberg so that time even albert einstein they call him he was somehow an initially supporter for that later on he told that he was opponent to that they used to call that because he's old that's why it is quantum mechanics was somehow an young man science most of the people was in 20 and 25 that time so that period oppenheimer published almost a dozen of papers including so don't consider oppenheimer as an administrator i think most of, so i'm trying to put that point into perspective he's a theoretical physicist or a scientist he published on a theory of electron and protons where he tried to mention that using pole dirac equation he mentioned that there is a possibility of antimatter anti electron which is a positron even pole dirac did not expect that much a complication of his own theory and he opposed it but niels bohr told it's not possible but later on after 2 year another scientist come up with a theory and he proved that the possibility of a positron so that was that was somehow an intellectual uh thriving so he mentioned there even i he used to mention as i previously mentioned niels bohr as a god and albert einstein as a cuckoo like that he used to mention that even they have spent later years in princeton and all he told albert einstein is somehow an landmark not a beacon he was somehow followed the traditions of all those classical mechanics and he culminated there so that how he was not able to get out of that that was the thing so that's something about a childhood of oppenheimer so he went back in 1929 he went back from germany to united states again he joined in university of california berkeley and he was studying there so that period somehow his interest begin to change because somehow that culminated to great depression as well so great depression was somehow having an influence you see most people having jobless and they don't have a work and such things happening that time so that give him some exposure to communism soviet communism and all he has lot of friends including his later wife is a communist follower chevalier there is a chevalier affair and all which later come across as a problem i'll give you a quick summary what it is chevalier affair is when he was going to the join the atomic bomb project a day before they become a party and chevalier his friend was telling that he find a way to transfer the atomic bomb information to soviets somehow that was haunting him in the later period oppenheimer especially so that period even he was some of the few person who was 
read all the volumes of das capital all the books of lenin so he was somehow intellectually following that but he was not that much active into communism but most of the people tried to put him under that that point later in 1939 soviet signed a non aggression pact with germany but following that germany invaded poland and world war 2 started further to it russia also invaded poland then further you know pearl harbor was attack by japan navy forces and us joined the world war 2 that's how us joining the world war but the point is that oppenheimer was there in berkeley they, that time he was part of crompton and the uh, famous scientists of crompton who have crompton effect and all so he tried to tell about the particle nature of the of the electromagnetic radiation that was his contribution so he was heading there and oppenheimer was in charge of the radiation laboratory and all so that was a period when us is joining and oppenheimer is there in us and oppenheimer is somehow coming from germany one of the specialist in quantum mechanics or quantum physics so the turning point in most of the people's life especially for oppenheimer was happening when one of his colleagues in radiation laboratory in berkeley he was in a barber shop strange actually he was hearing in wire news telling that a scientist otto hahn and uh, another scientist in germany they invented the electro like f- radiation or fission they are able to split a uranium nucleus into two by neutron bombardment so immediately after that he ran from that that was the story he ran from the barber shop he go and tell oppenheimer and his colleague they have done this and oppenheimer immediately tell it is impossible he tried to make calculation to prove that but alvarez the person who was heard this news what he tried he tried to create that setup in the laboratory in berkeley radiation laboratory and he prove himself so the immediately when alvarez shows that in 15 minutes oppenheimer told that okay if we can split like this if we multiply that more we can create a bomb so somehow immediately that intuition comes to his mind is that how somehow was starting there so american as we mentioned so we have this fission happening radiation laboratory at the same time leo salard is also a scientist hungarian german american physicist i would tell he was having contribution in fission chain reactions and all he was worried that germans are going to make an atomic bomb so he go and meet that time the scientific celebrity albert einstein and he told einstein could you please write a letter to franklin d roosevelt the president of united states and einstein agree with taking the lot of signatures from others and all so somehow you see this man leo salard he was involving in the beginning and end of in the initial part and the later of this atomic bomb project somehow he is telling to stop it but it's he is a trigger for all of this like usually they used to tell that when we have an anti war protest that is somehow promoting that war energy if you're telling no if i want more like harvaker and even mother teresa was against the anti war protest and all so that's was similarly what's happening so albert einstein was not completely or directly involved on any of the atom bomb project but he was the person who was having the trigger and he was later initiation of the same so alvarez was so immediately after receiving the letter from einstein franklin d roosevelt introduced the uranium committee that was very initial stage but when they attacked pearl harbor they went into war that process somehow expedited or accelerated i would tell later uk or britain who is already involved heavily on the world war they have a proposition or called two balloy project which is something like a super bomb 
similar to atomic bomb project so they are telling okay this is possible uranium is possible so they were trying to contribute to the american project as well even niels bohr was a consultant that time there so that somehow more like more and more efforts was happening later they come to a point where they make a manhattan engineering district which later called as manhattan project so a construction i'm not sure to call engineer a construction officer or a person in charge for pentagon construction uh lc groves he was the he was promoted as a brigadier and he was given in charge for manhattan project Manhattan project is not generally one place it has multiple places almost 30 plus sites 100000 people lo- lot of resources was there in so one of the key places like there are places in U- U- Washington and all where used to have uranium purification and plutonium like that but the main thing which is happening in Los Alamos laboratory where all the things happening that happened because of oppenheimer was suggesting lc groves to do that so when lesley groves in charge for the manhattan project he tried to go through have a tour in berkeley and so that time he get an opportunity to meet oppenheimer and they oppenheimer knows that this man is in charge for manhattan project atomic bomb project somehow he tried to impress him and when we have a he was one of the person who give that idea as i mentioned idea of los alamos laboratory was los alamos is one place which oppenheimer is know from his early childhood as well so that somehow culminated so when lesley groves want a director for that facility he was trying to search for multiple people but the name come to him was oppenheimer naturally but he tried to ask opinion for multiple people almost all people he asked opinion they told no to that but later on in own conviction lesley groves put him as a director he even he was not getting security clearance and all because as i mentioned he was having a communist affiliation which was somehow blocking him to do that so that was all happening that time but they started in los alamos it somehow like a desert within between the mountain one place that's how it is but they spent a huge money for this particular place so that area, that time they were trying to have multiple options to do they were initially thinking okay we'll make it like a gun type bomb gun type explosion so it will trigger and like that that was one idea but that can be only done using uranium then another proposal was to use plutonium plutonium but the point is that you cannot use it as a gun type thing it will explode so they have to like an implosive design something like this implosive type design like that gun type design is something similar to this one so that's how it is so but gen- they have other concerns as well that particular time there was multiple ideas happening even there was a super bomb project by edward teller telling that we can make a hydrogen bomb hydrogen bomb somehow work in nuclear fusion but to fusion to happen we have to have a high temperature state which can be only achieved using fission so plasma state and also somehow oppenheimer was against the teller proposal telling that let us do this first then we'll think about that then another concern happening was that whether we make this atomic bomb whether that will get fire to the atmosphere so that uh, atmosphere have a huge quantity of nitrogen will it so such concerns happened later they calculated and they tell no so lot of that ideas it was somehow like lot of scientists fermi oppenheimer richard feynman lot of these people was all there in one place so more than it's 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 a military site for sure Los Alamos was a military Manhattan project but even Leslie Groves was not having a control on this more than a military site it is something like a scientific research resort or something like that they call it like that a resort so a lot of ideas was culminating and that that things was happening that time so in 1943 Los Alamos started 
Enrico Fermi, Feynman, Oppenheimer, many people were there. So Oppenheimer considered atomic bomb projects as a culmination of three centuries of physics, which is somehow like quantum mechanics and other things. So as I mentioned, when the world war started, they were having more push to make it happen. Niels Bohr also joined the Los Alamos team. And when Niels Bohr came and met Oppenheimer, he told an interesting opinion about Heisenberg. Heisenberg, maybe you know, if you follow. I'm, I'm adding a link to another book in our channel called Something Deeply Hidden, which talk about all these people. But Heisenberg is famous for uncertainty principle and all. He explained to Bohr two years ago that the there was an actual atomic bomb project happening in Germany. And he showed the pictures and other things as well, a lot of things. That was something like a more push to these people to accelerate their studies and all. So Bohr joined there and somehow Bohr, Niels Bohr is a person, he is famous for his Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics where tell, okay, the electron is there, electronics not there. When you look at it, it's there collapsing, not going much there. But he not only find complementarity in physics, he found complementarity in everything, in life, in reasoning, in a lot of things. So that complementarity, like for example, if you if you tell, okay, he's a father of atomic bomb, that sim- similarly, one point it will come that he's a man of evil or something like that will come to us, right? Like for example, Adolf Hitler put too much people in trouble for Jews and all. But some authors find it like Neil Donald Walsh and tell that he love his people. So I'm telling there is a multiple perspective for that. There is a complementarity in in um, Hindu script. They call it like a duality in, in this one. Even in in Quran, Holy Quran 36.36 is tell that holy who he is, he make everything in on earth in pairs, including the things you know and including the things you don't know. What is known and unknown, holy or grace or holiness is to that God who created everything in pairs, who you know and you don't know. So all of the work in was in war. They were having these concerns about war, whether it will be used in uh, in in war and all world war. But their mission was that they have to stop Germany from doing this. So they have to make it before Germany. This was something like a reason. Like that was somehow I think when uh, Oppenheimer was having that influence in Gita, which is telling the same, it is between a war between two families where Lord Krishna, the God or avatar of Lord Vishnu, he is trying to just give an opinion or just motivate him to tell that, okay, this is right. You are doing it for you a, a better reason like that. That's somehow that influence of that. So as I mentioned that we have two designs available at Los Alamos for the atomic bomb. First one is gun type design like this, like gun type design, which they used uranium isotope 235, which later become as little boy atom bomb, which they drop it in. I think Hiroshima, I believe. Then another thing was about implosion bomb using plutonium, another radioactive material. But Oppenheimer was not sure it will work. So he wanted to put it into test. Leslie Groves was somehow not interested on such testing. But as I mentioned, science rules supersede military rules in Los Alamos. So they go and make the test. That was somehow the world's first nuclear test. They, the, they call the place called uh, Trinity, which having multiple reasons, there is some, some version telling that, okay, Oppenheimer put it because he was, he was reading Donny's holy sonnet. And in other places they're telling he's because again, go to that Hindu scripture version of three gods where uh, Vishnu, Shiva and Brahma have three gods. Based on that, he come across that version. Multiple versions are there. But the point is that they are trying to go and make the test. And they tested it at early morning at 5.30. And everyone, including Oppenheimer, Feynman, 
all of these people was excited they make a special area to make it i like uh, the pictures and all so th- that that thing was somehow an excitement okay it worked it did not just go off like that it worked but at same time that create some worries for them also okay well, how what will happen if they going to use this so that point it come to a point that they were telling okay instead of why don't we tell japan and all these people okay we have an atomic bomb will they stop war then such things was happening then another version was that okay if you want them then they will going to make it also so such things was also happening at that time sir so when there was even in 1945 1944 i believe when the trinity test happened next after some weeks american president holly truman met uh, joseph stalin and he told about we have an interesting weapon now but somehow stalin was not showing that much interest or oh, he was just telling okay is it okay that's it so he was not because in 1944 itself before that at that same time there was a scientist spy inside los alamos his name is klaus forge so they were getting information even later on oppenheimer was haunted for this transferring information which called chevalier affair and all but this was already happening that time so that time especially before world war and after world war after world war especially russians was most like a copycat we have a book in our channel called chip war which mentioned about how they copied chips and all so that's how the position they have a test done successfully tested they have a ready made weapon but they have two things in mind it's a dilemma now so after the trinity test adolf hitler got suicide later part for the world war and germany surrendered but japan was still in the war somehow the scientists again get afraid whether they will use the atomic bomb on japan so the same person who triggered albert einstein to make a letter in the beginning to roosevelt he again go and met einstein to make another letter not to put it on japan he sent it to franklin de roosevelt but unfortunately franklin de roosevelt passed away that time and the letter was read by harry truman and they were going to meet oppenheimer and discussion there was having some discussions and all even uh, dwight eisenhower eisenhower the military commander at that time which later he became a president and all he was also thinking we don't have to uh, somehow japan is already at the brink of surrender don't have to push them or anything like that but they were not okay with that they decided okay we will put a bomb on japan so in august 6 1945 814 am the first gun type atomic bomb little boy was been dropped so even oppenheimer was giving so much precise instruction he told that don't drop it by radar do direct dropping don't drop it through the cloud so he was so much make sure that okay my bomb should hit and it was hit at hiroshima little boy and it was a big devastating effects even uh, the leslie groves call oppenheimer later from washington and he told it was very good come better than our our latest after a week a week and after they put another bomb called fat man which is a plutonium as i was we discussed earlier it's an implosive bomb in nagasaki and japan surrendered unconditionally and the war ended So yes atomic bomb killed all these people but somehow directly or indirectly that resulted in the ending of atomic but there still can be a debate okay japan was already ready to surrender germany already already surrendered so axis powers are not in place so what was the point of this but somehow that happened it has to be happened and it happened so after the atomic bomb oppenheimer become a celebrity 
he was even able to meet president truman and all and he was trying to negotiate with truman telling that okay it's an international problem don't use it and all they get a meeting with him but that meeting was not at all good even oppenheimer at some point he was having that intellectual arrogance he used to tell to oppenheimer uh, president truman that i have blood in my hands because president truman was telling that okay he there is no chance that soviet is going to make the bomb or anybody else we are going to have that atomic monopoly but some open homer is telling our atomic monopoly is something like ice melting under the sun so he was not happy with it but then that meeting somehow ended but later as we know like later things happened and the russians was having that operation jo they that somehow changed the opinion of truman as well but eisenhower government hundred oppenheimer doing that period for this communist affiliations and all he was having fbi was having make report and all these things that was somehow a haunting period for him until eisenhower changed to john f kennedy become the president they decided to just give him enrico fermi prize which is about 50000 dollar and all so that was somehow a, a period where truman to kennedy the eisenhower period was somehow a challenging for oppenheimer so as i mentioned yes later on we have soviet was into atomic bombs many other countries come into it united nations was built even now if you look at the permanent members of uh, united nations they were those allied members who are having the world war 2 so that somehow ended he was having influence on policies but later on oppenheimer resigned from the los alamos and he go and teaching the physics he was having again working relation with albert einstein in that time they were having lot of conversation they don't they have their own opinion but they respect each others and all and that somehow the ending of that book so in general uh, as i mentioned i did not watch the movie but i'm sure christopher nolan have made it something better than this because this book was written in 2005 and this was an inspiration so he done if you remember his movies like inception tenet i am not a movie reviewer so i am not expert on that but i am sure it will be nice so feel free to read the book and after reading if you have some getting some new insight put it into the comments also if you get a chance to watch the movie and if you like to comment on it please put the comment in the comment box also until we come across with the next book Thank you. Bye. Bye for now.